Thank you. Okay. okay. Good uh, evening, everyone. So I'm Harsha from WSO2. Um, it's uh, happy to see you all in here. And uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the open source impact on digital transformation today. And um, the Kong speech um, that mentioned that the baseline is the open source for everything now. So open source is getting involved in the rapid phase in, uh, during the past few years. And uh, OK. Um, so this is a little bit introduction about myself. And um, I'm an associate technical lead. And, uh, project management committee member at WSO2, and um, I'm also a fan of open source. And uh, I was um, involved in the open source for seven to, years, seven to eight year, years now. And also, I'm a, um, a core committer and a maintainer of uh, FIRE module at uh, OpenMRS. Uh, OpenMRS is an open medical record system, uh, which uh, somehow may heard about it. And uh, many thousands of people are getting benefit of this open source uh, software. And also, I'm a Google Summer of Code mentor and uh, organization administrator and uh, Google Coding mentor uh, for the OpenMRS. So the Google um, Summer of Code DS program is conducted by Google. There are um, 200 of uh, open source organizations getting participated where and uh, 2,000 university students are getting involved with this open source organization to build um, some projects during the summer period of the uh, US. And uh, the students all are coming from the all around the world. And it's a very good program. And it's a very good program for all the open source software. And uh, uh, the Google coding is for, they are for the little kids, which uh, uh, age ranging from 9 to 70. So um, if you have a kid, then you should know about kids who are willing to work with the tech. I strongly recommend to um, move them to a Google coding um, competition where uh, they can work with open source software um, organization. And if they want it, the Google will uh, provide the um, travel and a grand prize winner trip to the Google headquarters. So it's uh, amazing. And uh, so I'm from WSO2. I'm work for WSO2. And WSO2 is a number one uh, integration, open source integration vendor in the market, and the sixth largest Apache committer, and the seventh largest open source vendor in the market. And we help. Uh, uh, organization to um, become an enterprise integrated and agile um, in their uh, digital transformation journey. And uh, recently, with the recent Forest Wave uh, report, our API manager named as a leader, um, and we are the op only open source, fully open source solution in the wave analysis. And WSO to provide good breadth across all the evaluation criteria. So it's a good achievement for us, but it's a very good achievement for all the open source projects because um, it's happy to be a leader as an open source project in the wave analysis. And um, so talk about the digital transformation. Digital transformation is about creating a digital experience for your customers. If I, uh, I am a customer of your software, I feel good if you provide uh, relevant suggestions and discounts, the low health points, and um, better search results, and even um, best things to buy. Even when I buy something from Amazon, you can see several relevant items are getting listed from the site. And um, I feel good about it, but I don't have money. But if the, the items that are getting listed is most relevant for my, me. That's because of the technology, and technology used to um, identify what his user is doing in your system and give a better experience for him or her um, when he comes back to your software again. So that's about uh, creating a digital experience for your customers. And uh, digital transformation is a um, continuous evolving process. There's no ending. Because digital transformation is about uh, integrating digital technology into your all business softwares. It's not about uh, softwares that's facing the customers. But it's, not, it's all the software that the organization has in your uh, environment. Because you need to transform your organization to be digitally. And you, your employees and your customers should get the, all the benefit of the new technology when the, during the digital transformation. And the state of our technology adoption is the key during the digital transformation. You have to adapt the new technology, and you need to play with it, and you need to get the benefit out of it. You no longer can, can be a, a legacy vendor, legacy platform, because 
you will be escaping, you will be trapped in the 80-20 spending trap. There, uh, this rule says 80% of the, so the budget this allocated for IT project is going for the maintaining of the particular software. And only 20% is there to um, new innovations. So you need to be escaped from this trap. And you need to be digitally transformed. And you need to um, work on creating new things in your platform. That's the <coughs> main uh, benefit of the digital transformation. And um, when you, when you transform in digitally, there are four key type of components that which you should have in your platform. The first one is the API management. The API management is the place where you expose APIs to outside or internal members with the uniform manner. With the digital transformation, the APIs and um, services are getting changed rapidly. So you need to have a better documented APIs where your external vendors, partners can come and discover and build the application on top of it. You can't uh, ask your external or your application developers to come and talk to your backend developers and see, understand what this API is doing. So it's better if you need to have an API marketplace where anyone can come and discover what, is, what are the APIs that you have in your platform. The next thing is the integration, where you have the service measures. The integration layer is a very ch changing layer where many vendors, many software industry, they do changes to the integration layer, very rapid manner. But the API layer is not getting to change very frequently because you, need, you can't break the APIs which the, your customers are using. So integration layer will change very rapidly and the API management layer provides them uniform access to the, all the other customers or the, um, the users who are using your APIs. And uh, with these two, it's not enough. To have a better security and a better access control, you need to have an identity and access management solution in your um, deployment. It's key that you control the identity, security, and the privacy across your digital business. You, um, the recent security breaches in Facebook and uh, Marriott, uh, it's leaked um, millions of user data. So you need to have a better security mechanism uh, rules in your platform. The last part is the analytics. The analytics is used now, never than before. Analytics are the key, key for understanding how your platform is doing, what are your users are doing, how you can provide a better user experience for these users by analyzing their data, what they, that, what they have done in your platform. The analytics is a very key component in your digital transformation platform. <coughs> So the role of the APIs in the digital transformation. The APIs are the key point of contact when someone is using your services. You can have an underline your platform with change. You can change anything, but you can't break your APIs because your customers are going to use it. And uh, you can see the IoT services, your website, your partners, your internal services, cloud services, um, the desktop application and the mobile application, they all are using your APIs and uh, to communicate each other. So in the digital transformation, it's about integration component. So you have to design your APIs to work with these um, numerous amount of applications. So APIs are key in digital transformation. And um, so open source, why you why need open source in your platform? The open source is the only single place the change is getting adopted rapidly. The rapid adoption of new technologies and speed to the market with wider collaboration is the key in the open source. If you take um, the recent technologies which comes into the market, they came all uh, as a format of an open um, source initiative. The people who go and go there, their code base, they can identify what's going on in this code and they can play with it, and they can fix anything. They can deploy it and try it out. That's the benefit of open source. And uh, in open source, there's um, unlimited power in the community. When you compare to a closed source company, you will have a fixed amount of team. But in open source, people come all around the world and get together, uh, build new things, and try new things, and present it to the world. So that's a... Uh, um, 
um, benefit of open source software. And the wider thinking and wider intellectual input that comes from the community is key to build the uh, mature and the future software which need for the current need of the, soft, uh, the business industry. And uh, the open source software use open standards most of the time. So because if you use open standard, even you change the underlying software, you, you won't break anything because you support the standard, not for the specific vendor. So it's a key that uh, open source software has because they adopt the open standards. And uh, uh, it provides better security because open source software is designed to be secure because anyone can access your code and identify any security vulnerabilities. So you can't be um, um, simple, simply take it uh, because you need to take serious actions in the open source. And now the industry is moving with a rapid pace, and Google, Microsoft, IBM, they are all uh, uh, to open sourcing their technologies, and you can work with the best in the business. That's a, a key thing that's happened in the recent past. Now, even Microsoft is moving towards open source now. And um, uh, open source software is not bound to any proprietary license cost. You can freely use it if you want, there's no one come and ask, pay, please pay for my usage. You can freely use it. Uh, and in the digital transformation business, you need to play with the technology and you need to adapt the correct technology for you. Because technology is a vast thing. Um, it's changing thing. But you need to adapt the right thing. To adapt the right thing, you need to play with it. And you, with the open source, you can build rapid prototypes and adapt the technology and move forward with it. Or decide not to forward it. That's the advantage of having open source software. <coughs> so uh, why the um, uh, closed source, open core, IPaaS are not equipped to handle the challenge and change? They are not changing very rapidly. If you look at the closed source or proprietary software, they are not to handle, uh, handle the change rapidly as open source. The open source has the community and collaboration power, which uh, is the best way to speed up the you know, innovation. And the open contribution make uh, the change in protocols get adapted to your uh, open source software with uh, ease, because you have unlimited amount of community power. And uh, from the WSU perspective, we have 1 million of open source contributions, and the sixth largest Apache committer, and the 69th largest GitHub organization in the world. And we have around 300 uh, contributors working with open source project, which is uh, from uh, 100 plus projects now <clears throat> and um, when the when you transform in digitally you need to look at four different aspects you can't follow the traditional waterfall development approach because in digital transformation is about the agility you need to um, adapt the technology as fast as you can and you need to be you can't follow the waterfall approach and uh, with the microservices the um, code first approach comes where you do the code and um, so you, you need to, um, if you have, if you stuck with the vendors who low code and legacy platform, uh, it will be hard to maintain. So you need to get away from the low code platform because microservices you will code more, and the proprietary interpretation products force lock-in technology and dev, dev schedule. So if you use proprietary standards or software, you will stuck in the particular vendor. So you need to think about how um, vendor is support for open standard. And uh, um, in the early, earlier, I mentioned that uh, there are four different components should be in there in your platform, in the digital transformation platform. One is API management, second one integration, third one is uh, identity and access management, fourth is analytics. So you better to find a vendor who support all these things because then you don't need to go for back and forth for different vendors who um, support different things. If you find a vendor which support all these things, you will stick and you can bet, have a better communication with him. <coughs> and uh, uh, there's a discussion on here that every company will become a software company. And the uh, systems are becoming more intelligent because of the machine learning and the AI system innovations. And uh, digital transformation is a race where everyone wants to get into the market first. And they want to get the competitive advantage of being a digital transformation organization. And the uh, Gardner article that um, the report suggests that 
all industry rank the digital business as the top 10 priorities in uh, their business uh, proposal. So everyone is moving toward the digital transformation now. <clears throat> and the digital transformation, you can't um, um, do it alone. You need to have a help with some other vendor. You need to use uh, existing software technologies to build your platform. That's why you move towards the open source. Open source is the best place where you have the existing tools and technologies, and so you can build your platform on top of that. So it's better that you have a good journey partner, and the, the rapid changing in the business requirement during the digital transformation, you need to um, have a good vendor who support for your uh, requirements, where you can influence your, the software uh, features and get them into the software, um, the current software that you are using. So it's very important that you um, have a vendor who support for flexibility. <coughs> and uh, when it comes to the software quality, there are some myths where the open source is not uh, quality enough. But uh, you all know about the Linux, and Linux law says, given enough eyeballs, all bugs are shallow. That means give your software to uh, use for different different communities, then they will report the bugs and they will fix things for you. And um, so the um, amount of bugs in the software, open source software, is getting reduced drastically. That's the best thing about the open source software. And the code contribution and review process of world best developers. The, if, the, if someone do a code contribution, it will review by multiple developers. It won't merge straight away. And uh, there are code quality tools getting integrated with the build processes, and the automated code inspections um, make it harder to uh, code, commit uh, bad code to open source now. So it's, um, open source quality is getting improved drastically. And if you take Linux, see how secure, how um, bug-free software is that because of the community power. And um, open source software is come with the better security. Because teams are extra precautious about the security of the open source. That's because anyone come, any hacker, any um, researcher can come and discover a bug in the code if you don't pay extra attention to the security. Because of that, uh, open source software are designed to secure from the inception to implementation level. We, we uh, in the WSO2 or any other software, open source software company, they provide extra attention to the security. And uh, the contributions that is coming from the community, who are the hackers, who are the researchers, who are the enthusiastic about the security, they provide vulnerability reports. We fix them with help of them. Some are new, because uh, the closed source vendors may not know about these vulnerabilities, because these are getting discovered by the open source enthusiastic people. And that's a good thing about the open source. The, you have the better secure software. And the transparency is at best. You can have a vendor who says, we support this, and we, um, we calculate your tax, or you, we calculate your vote with uh, accurate information. But uh, who can trust on that? If the software is open source, you can go and see well, what's the logic behind this code, and how um, this software is designed, how accurate is this. With the closed source systems, you can't trust on that. Even they provide, the, say, it's a GDPR compliant. So you, you have to rely on the answers of that vendor. But the open source, you can go and discover whether it's correct or not. That's a better thing of the open source. And it's built around the open standards. Open standards are key to integrate your system with the, each other. The digital transformation is about integrating the systems with each other. So it's Supporting the open standard is a key. If you lock with the proprietary standards, you will lock for that system for a long time. You will, uh, you will be hard to maintain, and you will, it will be hard to migrate from that software. So the open source software supports open standard. It's very key um, aspect of open source software. And uh, the extensibility and customizability of open source software is uh, massive. So in the digital transformation, the requirements are getting changed. There's no single piece of software that can support all the requirements of your organization. 
So you need to find a vendor who can support your incoming request, incoming features, because some features may be benefit for other vendors as well in the community. So with the open source, you have the influence. You can influence the roadmap of the open source software. You can discuss the ideas openly, and you can get these things implemented by the community. So that's the power of open source software. It, we, it can't be done in the proprietary closed source projects. This is the power of open source. And the open source is getting involved. And the, the, even the NASA is using uh, the open source software for the mission critical systems. And uh, Forrester says 45% identify increased their use of open source as high critical priority for 2016. Now it's more than that. It's now we are in 2018. And the increased demand of, for the agile and customer obsessed technology drives the interest towards open source. If you want to be more agile, you need to move towards uh, open source software. And uh, mature open source projects, if you take Linux, now um, the, it's dominating the market in the container world. So it's open source. It's with, built with the community power. And so these are some stats that I took from some articles. The Linux open source operating system runs on 65% of all servers in the world. Now it's more than that. It will grow up to 80 to 90% because of the um, nature of the open source, the Linux platform. And the Black Duck survey finds that nearly 80% of companies run part of all of their operation in open source. And 65% of the companies leverage open source software to speed up the application development. And the 67 companies encourage their developers to actively contribute to open source. So these stats speak how companies are moved towards open source. It's a very good see, thing to see, because there's no point of uh, hiding a technology that you have in closed source, because it can benefit the massive number of community. And uh, if you took a look at the market progression, we had uh, Sun Microsystem, where we don't have uh, no virtualization, but it moved towards the cloud native, where it moves towards the open source. And the cloud native software foundation where the cloud technologies are getting adopted, and many people contribute their code to the um, cloud native software foundation. Even Kubernetes, uh, Prometheus, and all the softwares are getting contributed back to the um, cloud native software foundation. So um, the world is moving towards the open source now. And the one thing is the passionate developers. Developers are feel good about what are they doing in the open source, because it's uh, open. Anyone can go and see, show, this is my innovation, and people are getting benefit of it. That's about the uh, passionate, because uh, only the, there's no one going to point, you should work on this project. Only the passionate developers will find, this is the important software for me, and I'm going to work with them. And with them. Because of the passion, their software will become more quality. And the corporate advantage is massive using the open source. The rapid development, um, you can do a rapid development in your organization using open source, and the modular architecture help integrate with the more components, and uh, there are reduced uh, duplication work, and uh, you can interview the people, and you can see the talent that you're going to attract to your organization by looking at the open source contributions. So it's the best interview that you can do um, for a person. And uh, recently, the Google open source Kubernetes, TensorFlow, the Facebook, Open source, open cellular, open compute, Twitter, MisOS, Netflix, Netflix OS suit, and the Microsoft open source the VS Code. And the Microsoft open source a lot of patents, which is a thousand of patents, betterment of the open source. Because even Microsoft know the value of the open source now. And you can see the rank, top contributions. Microsoft is Google, Red Hat is at the top. Microsoft wasn't there in the open source. Now it's very do a huge change in your platforms and their, how they operate. They move towards open source. And uh, as a corporate, it's a responsibility that you uh, do something back to the open source community. If you use some tools, open source tools, you have the obligation that you can contribute back or you can give something to the open source because it will be um, good for your human beings, good for the, your community. And um, it's not about money. And um, it will, uh, organization should help, 
to build the next generation and uh, foster the innovations. So that's the organization pers perspective that you, they should look at the open source. So I'm going to um, end my talk with the famous quote from Charles Darwin. So it's not the strongest of species that survives, neither the most intelligent. The species that is most adapted to change is going to survive. So you need to adapt the change and you uh, decide which tools, which technology that you need to move towards. Thank you.